Hickok 45 here. <laughs> I do confess. Another new service revolver. What's wrong with me? Yeah, a lot of things wrong with me. Let's hit a stop. <laughs> One of them is I uh, seem to want too many firearms. Oh, yeah. And that cowboy's making fun of me, so I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> I got one more bullet. Let's shoot something orange like that. UT 2 liter. Mm, I think that's it all, right? I have one left. All right. Oh, yeah. Another new service revolver. What is wrong with me? Well, there's a hint right there. And some of you know, because uh, some of you can actually read the title of the video. And you might still be wondering what that's all about. And I will tell you. Yep, it's just another, just another new service revolver. Big old 45 Colt. But I had to really do it. Uh, let me get those cases out of there. Yeah, this is uh, another new service revolver. Uh, maybe I'll link to, oh gosh, I don't know which one. <laughs> and maybe a couple of the other new service revolver uh, videos we've done. Because you might be able to tell, I like these. I have four of them. Yeah, I'm not going to shoot all of them and talk uh, endlessly about all of them or anything. But I wanted to kind of put it in perspective. The special thing about this one is, and I just picked it up. Uh, picked it up yesterday, in fact. And uh, was anxious and, and happy to, to get it. It's not as in good a shape as a couple of these, or maybe any of them. But it's in some ways it's in better shape. But it was uh, carried issued in 1919 to the uh, Northwest, well, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police in Canada, okay? If you know anything about them, they are a very storied uh, group. You know, the Northwest Mounted Police, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police, the Royal uh, Canadian Mounted Police. They went through an evolution of like at least three different designations. This one was kind of in the middle, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police of Canada uh, from about 73, 1873 up to about 1904, they were the Northwest Mounted Police, okay? And then around 1904, they got the designation, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police, okay? And so that's when this one, that's what this one has on it. And, uh, but it was towards the end of that period, 1919, 1920, they changed the designation again. They, uh, they merged, as I understand, with the Dominion uh, Police Force or whatever it was called. And, and, and then they, they uh, together, they became pretty much the official Canadian Federal Police Force, okay? And that was kind of it in a nutshell. But the, the Canadian police, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they have a reputation. Many of you, if you've got any age on you at all, you've seen movies about them, you've read books about them, and they're uh, very distinct, you know, in their dress, very proper, kind of British-like, you know, they're very uh, uh, very proper and uh, well well-armed and well-regulated as in what the uh, Second Amendment means by well-regulated, not what the gun banners would like for it to mean, right? So they, they're really particular about their equipment and, and all that, and proficient with their equipment. They have that reputation and getting their man, so to speak, too. Uh, so anyway, that's where this one was issued, and that's what makes it special, okay? And made it more expensive, too, even though it's not in perfect shape. You know, it's got blemishes on it. So I'd like to get my hands on whatever... Uh, Mountie carried this thing. Why he let the barrel get a blemish on it in, you know, different places. What was he thinking? <laughs> well, he might have been in some really harsh uh, territory up there in, the, in, guess what, the northwest part of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it's a 45 Colt, and uh, the early ones were in 455 Ely, I think it's pronounced. Uh, it was basically the Webley you know, cartridge, but the Colt didn't want to call it the, the Webley because Webley was their, one of their primary competitions at the time. And that's what the, uh, the mounted police had carried up, up until they changed to the Colt. So, uh, so it was the 455 uh, Ely. I think that's the way it's pronounced, not Eli, it's Ely, I guess. And uh, the 45 Colt's a better cartridge, you know, anyway. So they went to that in 1919, about the year this came out, okay? So, but, the, but it was the, uh, this gun, the new service revolver, after 1904, I believe, 1905, right in there, they went to the Colt new service revolver, because, you know, these things came out in 1898. So 
they they went to this in around 1904, chambered in the 455 Ely, but it was the same, you know, the same firearm. You wouldn't be able to tell by just looking at it because they're both 45s. It just took a shorter cartridge case, okay? But they got wise in 1919 and went to a real bullet, a real cartridge, one like that. Actually, it's probably more like this. It was uh, probably lead. <laughs> uh, yeah, doubt that it was copper jacketed. Don't know. Or like semi hand load to be more specific, probably. Yep. So, and before I go any further, now I don't think I'm going to put a silencer on any of these today, but they would in Hollywood, wouldn't they? But we appreciate the help uh, of uh, Silencer Central, uh, one stop shop for your all your silencer and suppressor needs. It really is. They'll fix you up, set you up. Uh, great uh, consultants uh, guide you through it step by step, get you the the proper. A suppressor that you might want or need and then take care of all the paperwork and everything and for it's when it's approved ship it to your door okay so we appreciate their assistance but yeah now in hollywood they would do that they would uh, you know how many movies have you seen where they got a suppressor on the end of a revolver which doesn't work too well so anyway there are a couple of revolvers on the planet that have been made in time that it might but the what in the gun whatever it was uh, so let's shoot the thing again can i I'll put some more bullets in it. I I shot it for the first time today. I really did. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm so familiar with these things. I, I like them, and uh, it's kind of like getting another Colt single action. Take a couple of shots. Yep, hits for the sights point. Okay. There's not a lot else I need to study about it, really, in terms of the actual firearm. <laughs> so uh, whoever carried this was well-armed. Not only because uh, the new service Colts were just had a reputation for being well made, reliable, but uh, the sights were on. Okay, it's a good thing because I won't have to adjust that rear sight. Got any ideas how I might do that? <laughs> and that bowling pin. Boom! And that two liter. Woo, doggies. Yeah, man. Uh, Look at that, look at that brass. I mean, is that a pretty sight? These big cases, you know, and a pretty blued gun, a vintage blued gun, a Colt, you know, even though it's uh, it's not in perfect shape. How rude of the Northwest Mounted Police not keeping this firearm in perfect shape, right? So yeah, this is, this is neat. Uh, if you have no clue what I'm talking about, you've never even heard of the, you know, the Northwest Mounted Police, uh, you will, you know, you're probably pretty young. There's just endless uh, fiction uh, or, you know, non-fiction, you know, there's stories. Uh, I, I think of them, I've always thought of them, and maybe incorrectly, and some of you know a lot more about them. I'll bet you some of you folks living in Canada, we have a lot of viewers in Canada, and we appreciate you all. You know a lot more, and you may have some negative, you know, feelings about them, whatever, but the, the feeling that I think I've always had, uh, and, and Granted, a lot of from the movies, but that they're they're kind of like the uh, the Texas Rangers or something in a way because they were sent out like in 18 what 73 ish they formed and the Northwest Mounted Police sent out into the western part of Canada, northwest part and you know really the the west up there and and out there it was just like in you know uh, the United States. It was uh, wild and woolly, a lot of stuff going on. There was a lot of illegal whiskey trade going on. That's one reason they sent them out there going back and forth across the border. They helped early on to, uh, I think, uh, help help uh, pave the way with the Native Americans in that area, I read. And uh, they were kind of a conduit, a, uh, uh, a communication source there for that and helped uh, at least early on. And, you know, Later on, just like I think in in the United States, there were so many people moving westward, you know, it's it just tough to, to, to deal with, with that. And the Native Americans, of course, suffered uh, up there too, I'm sure. But, but anyway, they had this mystique about them uh, because they were, they, you know, they always got their man kind of thing. You know, if they were after you, uh, they were going to get you. You know, like the Pinkerton detectives or the Texas Rangers or the Arizona Rangers and any other agency. They weren't just a bunch of fly-by-night you know, characters uh, looking for a couple of bucks and wearing a badge, you know, that sort of thing. And they were more or less, even early on, uh, I don't know if they were called federal, but they were, you know, they, they took care of, of major issues. You know, they weren't like your local sheriff or 
police in a small town, that kind of thing. So they had jurisdiction all through the, that was their mission more or less. And again, you know more about them than I do. Uh, anybody would. But then, uh, so they, they had a series of different firearms, you know, up through the 1800s in the last part of that century. It sounded like mostly Webley revolvers, okay? And uh, I also read they weren't as happy later on with the Webleys when the, some of the better Smith & Wessons and Colts became available, like these, the swing out cylinders and everything, because they, they're really reliable, and they would actually purchase them with their own money sometimes. So, so they, uh, when they, uh, in 1904, uh, adopted this, everybody was happy, okay? And then maybe even happier when they merged in 1919, 1920, and became the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and they went to 45 caliber. So that's kind of the, the just the, in a nutshell. Let's shoot some of these, one, two. Um, so anyway, the, I don't know if I can get that across well, but the the Royal Canadian, Canadian Mounted Police, they've always had a, a just a special mystique about them, and, uh, and I think it was warranted. You know, they're a pretty serious uh, a group, and I, I, they're still, I think, in operation at some level. And they, they carried this gun was in use, as I understand, like all the way up into the 40s, and in, in some places even into the 1950s. So, in 45 Colt from around, well, new service revolver from around uh, 1904 on up into uh, the 50s, it was in use to some extent. So, just good old revolvers. Hard to beat, hard to beat. They're big, but uh, a really good double action. All right, let's go over there and pop that gong. Let's pop that uh, buffalo, that bison over there. All right, <laughs> that's great. I just held right on it. I took a fine bead right on it and popped it. Uh, I'm just so happy this thing shoots right on. Oh yeah, really nice, really nice. <laughs> That's sweet. Uh, let's shoot this uh, cowboy right in the center. Yeah, how about right in the hat? Look at that. <laughs> nice. As I was pointing out in the uh, Sunday shoot around, when I first shot this, the very first shots I fired, I was just delighted as I, as I am. But uh, uh, there's just not much you can do with sights on a fixed revolver like this. But I tell you, there's nothing better than having sights like this where you have a pretty clear sight picture and it's just what you see there so they're not likely to get knocked off target are they you don't have to worry about adjusting them they just are what they are and they ain't what they ain't as john Pryor would say and uh, i just i just love it my little uh, 65 uh, smith and wesson's like that you know he's got the just like this you know no fixed size no adjustable size rather and they're right on so that's ideal if you have a good sight picture and the sights are on you can't ask for a more durable sight. Does it get any more durable than that? <laughs> what, are the, what are the chances you're gonna knock that off, you know? <laughs> uh, so it is a good thing you don't have to adjust it to the right or left, because that would be a challenge, wouldn't it? You have to get out your file, I guess. So anyway, yeah, it's got some blemishes, but uh, my gosh, carried by the, uh, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police. It uh, went to as a, uh, I uh, read this one supposedly went to the uh, to the you know Royal Northwest Mounted Police uh, in a lot of 200 in 1919, and this one was made in 1919. So here I am again shooting a 200 or a hundred 100 year old firearm. Shouldn't be doing that, should I? It, I mean, it doesn't even have any polymer on. Well, maybe the grips are kind of polymer. <laughs> we'll take a couple more shots, and I'll I'll make you leave. Okay. How's that? Well, one thing I will, I, yeah, I'll just tape shoot one more time maybe, but uh, we'll get it out again sometime. You know me, I love these old revolvers like this. Uh, again, I have a history with the new service. Uh, this started in kind of a weird way. I've told that story, how uh, dad, my dad who was in a contractor, and he found that behind a bank vault that they were, they were remodeling a bank, rebuilding it, and uh, they had to move a big old safe, and this had fallen down behind the safe. It was all rusty and in a bad, bad way. And that would have been in like the 70s. So no telling how long it had been there. And they gave it to him. There's a piece of junk. 
he cleaned it up and I cleaned it up more and uh, it was made in 1907. So that's an early new service commercial revolver. This one's not military. And then, you know, they adopted this in 1909. I have a video on this 1909. You know, this is U.S. property. This is a military gun. This is a military assault pistol. I uh, have videos on that, the 1909 new service. Same gun, basically, okay, but the military adopted it. Check out the video on that. Maybe I'll link to it because you might be too lazy to find it. <laughs> and then the same gun, basically, the 1917 Colt. The same gun, except they chambered it in what? Well, think about it. We had adopted the 1911, so we didn't want to be shipping 45 long Colt around the country, too. It chambers the 45 ACP. So same gun and 45 ACP. How's that for pretty quick? Pretty good for me, huh? So those are my three new service revolvers that I already had. And I explained, I confess why I had to have another one. Because, uh, again, I've always been fascinated with the uh, Northwest uh, weather. I've always thought of them as the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Okay, and until I did some reading, I didn't realize they'd gone through this transition. So, uh, starting out as the Northwest Mounted Police, and then the uh, Royal Northwest Mounted Police, which is what's on this one, and uh, and who used this one. All right, and that number on the back, uh, and you say that's just uh, like an issue uh, to the for the department, you know, for the uh, the agency, whatever, 1678, that's not, you know, I should have started out by telling you when that was, this gun was made in 1678. <laughs> it's a lost Colt, like the basement tapes or something. All right, that's just an issue number or something there. All right, well, this shoots five, uh, six more, so let's make them count. Let's put one on the cowboy. One on that two liter up there. One on that bowling pin. One on that little tree limb. Yeah. One on this target, one more on it. And with the last round, let's just shoot the stop sign to stop the whole operation. Yeah. I'm gonna save that pink two liter, mainly because it's pink. I didn't want to hurt him. All right, so yeah, we're empty. Uh, so anyway, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police revolver and uh, carried up north, probably in some very cold weather, maybe wet weather, maybe snowy weather. And so uh, it's, it's remarkable, I guess, that it's in the condition it's in. And uh, tight though, like a lot of uh, uh, police trade-ins, and we all, as we always say with uh, with cops guns or police guns. Uh, it, I, ne I never mean anything derogatory. I think most people, when you say the word cop, it used to be kind of a derogatory term. I don't, I mean, I've, I've been around a lot of cops. I don't, they don't really think of that as being derogatory. It's how you say things, isn't it? But anyway, uh, trade-ins from, you know, police departments, and all that, they're generally uh, carried a lot and not shot that much. And so they're usually mechanically uh, very, you know, pretty sound. It, but they may have blemishes from you know being carried in holsters. Whereas if if a civilian had bought this gun a long time ago and just taken it out to the range and never carried it, well the finish might be in perfect shape. But if you're carrying it all day long and it's snow in your holster and it's a, especially if it's a police revolver, it's an open carry holster and maybe it rains and you're out all day, you know, and snow and everything else and you come home and hopefully you clean it up but still you know, it's a daily exposure to the elements you know maybe falling out and, and who knows what a uh, firearm's been through you know if it's been carried and used so anyway it's cool i love these these revolvers and uh and uh, this one's kind of special because it's uh it hails from canada well let's see originally from colt but by way of canada okay back to us so pretty cool so Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you didn't, I'm going to cry. Good to see you all. Glad you came out. Appreciate you supporting everybody that supports us. Uh, so anyway, life is good. Uh, all right. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey. Didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips, so go check them out. Also, Ballastol, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water-soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube. 
for over 10 years. So Ballastol, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.